Hello, Adam, Midpoint Library Digital and Special Collections Archivist here. Welcome to part one of two about the Miami and Erie Canal in Middletown. Today's video will be looking at the general history of the canals in the United States, the development of the Miami and Erie Canal, and what the Miami and Erie Canal looked like in Middletown and the surrounding area. Part two of this mini-series, out in April, will look at the economic and geographical impact of the canal on Middletown. A canal is an artificial waterway constructed to allow the passage of boats or ships inland or to convey water for irrigation. In pre-industrial societies, waterways and access to them were vitally important for survival, success, and prosperity for a community. Some of humankind's older canals still exist and with some still in use. The oldest of such is China's Xinhong Grand Canal, which has parts that date back to the 5th century. The Xinhong Grand Canal also happens to be the longest canal and artificial river in the world. Other famous canals still in use include the canals of Amsterdam, Venice, and the Panama Canal. The oldest canals in the United States generally date back to the late 1700s and 1800s, and early 1800s. They were authorized by individual states, but run by private canal companies, like how turnpikes were privately built and owned roads. In 1817, the canal business changed when Governor, when New York Governor DeWitt Clinton was able to successfully fund the construction of the Erie Canal with public funds. Construction of the Erie Canal began in 1817 and finished in 1825, resulting in a canal system that connected the Hudson River to Lake Erie over 363 miles. The canal was an immediate success despite widespread skepticism and proved the viability of large-scale publicly funded canal systems. On March 1, 1803, Ohio officially became a state. That April, the Ohio General Assembly met for the first time in Chillicothe. Among the many things discussed were how to open the land-locked interior of the state to settlement, trade, and profit. By 1820, the Ohio General Assembly had determined that Ohio needed at least two major canals, one to connect Lake Erie by Cleveland with the Ohio River by Portsmouth, and another to connect Dayton with, with Cincinnati. In 1822, the canal, in 1822, the canal construction project finally got off the ground when the Ohio General Assembly created the Canal Commission. James Getz was lured away from working on the Erie Canal and hired to assess five possible routes proposed by the General Assembly. After conducting his survey, Getz quit, saying that Ohio was too treacherous and pestilential for him. The work to bring canals to Ohio continued, though. On February 4, 1825, the General Assembly passed the Canal Act, authorizing the construction of two canals, one from Cleveland in, in Lake Erie south to Ohio River the other from Cincinnati and the Ohio River North along the Great Miami River to Dayton. This Miami Canal was to potentially have additional additions connecting it to Lake Erie via Toledo. On July 21, 1825, south of Middletown on the Daniel Doty Farm, ground broke on the Miami Canal. Ohio Governor Jeremiah Morrow and New York Governor DeWitt Clinton were present. The construction of the canal was completed a little over two years later, and on November 28, 1827, the first boat from Cincinnati arrived at Middletown. In January of 1828, the first boats to make the complete trip arrived in Dayton from Cincinnati. The Miami Canal ran for 66 miles, had 24 locks, and 12 aqueducts. As soon as the canal was completed, preparations were made to expand the canal north. Known as the Miami Extension Canal, four new divisions were created, a 32-mile line between Dayton and Piqua, a 32-mile line from Piqua to St. Mary's, a 12-mile 12 12 line north of St. Mary, known as the Deep Cut, and a 33-mile segment from the end of the Deep Cut to Junction. Grand Lake St. Mary, now known as Mercer County Reservoir, now known as Mercer County Reservoir, was created during the construction of the extension. In March 1834, construction was authorized by the state of Ohio to complete the last 88 miles of Indiana's Wabash and Erie Canal, connecting Terre Haute, Indiana with Junction and Toledo. 
To complete this portion of the canal, Ohio went to war with Michigan from 1835 to 1836 in what is known as the Toledo War. Before real hostility broke out, the U.S. government brokered a settlement, granting Ohio the Toledo Strip and Michigan the Upper Peninsula. With the Toledo Strip in hand, Ohio was able to complete the Wabash and Erie Canal in June of 1842. With the Wabash and Erie Canal running through Junction, the Miami Extension Canal was now connected to Lake Erie. On March 14, 1849, the Ohio General Assembly passed an act combining the Miami Canal, the Miami Extension Canal, and the Wabash and Erie Canal into one canal system, renaming it the Miami and Erie Canal. The newly combined Miami and Erie Canal was 248.86 miles long. It had 113 lifts and was fed by three reservoirs and numerous dams. On June 27, 1845, the boat Banner completed the entire journey from Cincinnati to Toledo for the first time on the canal system, doing so over four days. When it was completed, the, Miami, the canal became the heart of Middletown, running through the village. Here you can see an outline of the canal in James McBride's 1836 map. And here is the canal. In, 1855, in, the, in the 1855 Butler County map. In time, the canal would become the town's cultural and economic heart. And to finish up today's video, we will look at some pictures of the canal in Middletown. Here's the canal in town circa 1890. The canal pictured here is most likely um, along present day Curtis Street in 1915 with Armco in the background. Here's one of the canal, Middletown's canal locks, circa 1910. And here's the canal view from Central Avenue Bridge, circa the 1920s. Moving outside of Middletown, we see the Miami and Erie Canal at Excello, circa 1875. And finally, the canal on October 1st, 1916, again around Excello. That is all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me, and make sure to keep an eye out for, number, for part two of this video series out in April. For more local history content, make sure to check out the www.midpointdigitalarchives.org. Have a good day.